esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. Buenos días, Miguel Ángel. Buenos días. Buenos días, Juanma. Buenos días, Jorge, Nancy. Hola, Antonio, ¿qué tal? Ah, muy bien. Comenzando fresco la semana. ¿Vosotros? Pues bien, también. He visto tu correo de hablar más del tema de los EPIs. Esto me lo dijo ayer un amigo que le llamé, un amigo médico, que le llamé porque ya es un cumpleaños, que, de, que por cierto tiene el coronavirus. Bueno. Y, y me dijo eso. No tengo mucha más información. No sé si has visto el vídeo de que venía asociado, no, creo que en el mensaje te lo mandé. O sea, ellos usan unos EPIs, dice que lo suyo es que los uh, EPIs tipo buzo, que tienen muchas... No sé si podemos hablar ahora, si no te llamo te llamo luego, pero es que tengo un día sí. terrible porque... Eh, sí, porque ahora ahora se se realidad es que los EPIs buzos tienen muchos componentes distintos y que para ellos es un coñazo porque... No, se no, no ya, ya, ya está... Tengo un informe que hizo Jurke de que las gafas de Decatron no, no aislan adecuadamente. Lo tienen comprobado. Otra cosa es que, que no lo quiere hacer público todavía. Ya, pero bueno, él habla del EPI completo, ¿sabes? Del, del, de lo que es todo el traje. O sea, ah. que, que cubra todo el cuerpo. Entonces, yo lo que pasa es que entiendo que eso es así porque tiene una razón de ser así. Eh, que tiene los, los, los uh, la parte del, del mono, que tiene la parte del de los zapatos, la parte de los guantes, o sea, la parte de las manos, la parte de la cara, pero como Epi, él, él habla de todo, de todo el traje. Y la verdad es que no tengo más información, o sea, que lo que tengo ahí, porque me lo dijo ahí en una conversación telefónica informal, y, y bueno, pues no sé si eh, okay. bueno, se puede hacer no algo, sé. pero es que se, se, se aleja mucho de mi área de expertise. ¿sabes? Vale, vale, pues ya lo miro y hablamos. Mucho, Felipe. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that uh, you had received my PowerPoint and that uh, it would I be possible to share. Yes, I okay, have it ready. Really. Um, it's, it's this one. I can show it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. But first, uh, I wanted to to share with everyone the the new rules because we have new rules from from us today. They are quite uh, strict on the management of the team of the time. So the idea is to allow everybody to participate because I don't know how much people we will be today, but uh, during the past Thursday and Friday session, we reached near 40 people in the meetings and a lot of experts. So the idea is to to give everybody the opportunity to to share, but for sure your your uh, speech is uh, important, and we will assign you you and Herve have together ten minutes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Philip. This is Jorge. Hi, Jorge. How are you? Fine. Uh, so I'm I'm waiting for for my colleague. Uh, Raúl Mayana from CERMAS, the, the Madrid uh, uh, Regional Healthcare Provider, and also my colleague uh, Maria Luisa, she works with me in, in Tipiomed. So, how much time do we have each, uh, uh, Antonio? Yeah, you will have, uh, because at the beginning, uh, this uh, session was only reserved for you, okay, for Jorge and, and Raúl, okay, and we, we include later. Um, Philips um, have a um, speech. So you have. Uh, Jorge, we have book uh, for Raúl 10 minutes and um, for you five, but you could manage those five, 50 minutes as uh, as you prefer, okay? Right. Just we talked yesterday for... and I have a presentation and Raúl is going to, to help me on top of it. And he will he will be for the question. So we can 
I think that with the 15 minutes uh, lo located for the two of them, we can we can we can do it uh, on time. I will put my my clock here, and also, but what I will need, I, I have made a, a short presentation, Antonio. I don't know if you can uh, share the. Uh, I I will company. give you the, the yes the, the presentation later because we, I prefer first sure. to explain. Sure. Let me see if Raúl is already here. Uh, Jose, this is Maria Luisa. I am Hi, here already. Hi, Maria Luisa. Okay. Good morning. Hi, good morning, all. I'm going to send a message to Raúl to see if he's joining. We will start very sharp on time. Okay. Right. If not, I, I just start and then Raúl will yeah. join. Yeah. Uh, Important. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Hervé speaking. Bonjour. Bonjour, Hervé. Hello. Hello. Good morning. So, Good morning, everyone. Buongiorno, Good cara morning. Ilaria. And bon dia, Vasco. Bon dia. Bon dia, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So, it's time. It's half past uh, eight. So, we will start immediately. The the rules for today's session is uh, we will split the session in three blocks. The first one is about concepts. The second is about needs, and the last one is about solutions. And we want to have the, to give the opportunity to speak to whoever is uh, uh, willing to make uh, some 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 uh, reflections okay so to do that in order to do that we will limit the uh, speeches from everyone uh, at in a, in a very very strict uh, form okay for the presenters at the beginning they have their own uh, spaces uh, we will see now the 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 times okay but for the rest we are lim limiting the speeches for at maximum three minutes okay um, that's uh, the main rules you are invited to exchange comments questions and ideas in slido with the code eca eca okay so i will show you the in the screen in the slido this is it uh, you will have uh, there the opportunity to make questions or answers comments and also to answer to the ideas and vote the ideas of everyone, okay? So the recommendation is to go there. I repeat, slide.do, uh, ECA is the code, okay? And uh, without uh, more comments, we will start with uh, Raul Mayaina or Jorge Gonzalez that will speak about uh, how to avoid rebound, concrete models, and measure. Okay, uh, Jorge, I'm giving you the presentator role. Right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah. Okay. We are keeping a, a watch. <laughs> 50 minutes. Right. So I'm, for the sake of time, I'm Jorge Gonzalez. I'm the managing director of uh, TPMED. We are a health, a digital health cluster that operates at European level, and I think that also Raúl. Mayaina from the CERMAS, from the regional healthcare provider in uh, in Madrid, will will be also so uh, we will be both presenting these uh, these ideas. So, uh, Raúl, please interrupt me whenever you want. We have 15 minutes, okay? And I guess that you can see my my screen now. Yes, we can see. Yeah. Good morning. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. I just want to give you some uh, indications how how to about uh, I will start by setting the, the context. I understand that the priority now, right now, in at uh, least in countries like in Spain, is, is uh, machines, so to say, respirators, marks, other equipment. But we know that sooner or later the lockout will be lifted gradually, and then the priority in our opinion, is to minimize the number of infections and prevent that there is a rebound in the number of infections as soon as people start to get out, out of the streets. So 
how do we combat the virus then? And of course, this is all, all our personal opinions, things that Raul and myself we have been discussing together with other people. Okay, so we think that at that point of time, what we need is to share data, information, expertise, knowledge, even wisdom, and perhaps with the support of digital solutions. So. What type of solutions should be promoted at this stage? Because in, at that, there will be hundreds of millions, so to say, of needs, of special needs, but not every need is prioritized. What we think is that we should prioritize uh, solutions that are impactful, that they can be deployed at, at least at national level, if not at European one, that are feasible from the legal and ethical point of view, that are culturally acceptable, because maybe there are solutions that are acceptable in China or in Asia, but not in Europe, and that are cost-effective. Most likely, these solutions will need the participation of different expertise, uh, health, technology, communication, etc. So what we think is that clusters are especially well suited to promote and coordinate this type of actions, okay? because this cross-sectoral and because they know the, the, the landscape, they have the connections, and they have the experience in coordinating these kind of actions. Now, regarding that, about the types of projects that could be deployed, we, as a kind of uh, segmentation of the projects, we can imagine three types of projects, okay? One is the, the what we call authorities to citizens. So, for example, I don't know, in, in, in Spain, we have the Corona Madrid, the Korean app, so it's one-to-end -one because it's like one central organization, likely the ministry or the regional healthcare provider, that deploys that solution to all the citizens in, in, in a geography. Then we have the bottom-up solution, so to say, the end-to-end, -end, the citizen-to-citizen. -citizen. And these, for example, are the, the network of volunteers that they set up a website to say, if, if you're an elderly person and you need help to buy groceries or anything, just let me know and I will help you. And then a last category is what we call M to N, is that, for example, organizations to members. And this could be, for example, companies. What can companies do to their employees? Now, each approach has pros and cons right now. One is, for example, that the authorities to citizens, it's very difficult to talk, to work right now with authorities because they are overloaded. And Raul, for example, he works in an authority and he can either now or later, he can tell you about the problems of working with authorities right now, okay? And obviously, there will be also a limited number of opportunities. I don't know, Raul, if you want to say something now, you prefer to say it uh, later about this case? We'll prefer later, Jorge. Thank you. Okay. Then citizens to citizens. The, the problem with citizens to citizens is that uh, the impact is limited, okay? Because... Uh, there is a lot of goodwill, but usually, and they are very, very fast to implement. But the problem is that uh, usually the impact is quite limited because not everybody know about them um, and so on. Now, M to N, I can tell you this is our preferred model now, and I can put an example of what we are doing, uh, is that we go through organizations to members. Uh, for example, what we are thinking right now is to how to support companies, private companies, to establish uh, protocols, uh, health security protocols among their employees. So the idea is that then uh, they are both infection within the labor uh, context. We have legislation that favors this communication between employer and employee. And uh, the thing is that we hope that this also helps the economic uh, recovery as soon as possible when we uh, facilitate the company that they generate trust among their customers to say, okay, I can deal with this business because they are following strict protocols or good protocols and they, they, to keep me safe, not only the employees, but also the customers. Okay, but everyone has pros and cons. Obviously, for the organization to member, you have to convince organizations to jump into the program. But this is how we have split the different approaches and in a way to see that. A lot of people is working on the first one, trying to help the authorities, but I think that this is, is, is going to take a lot of time and it's going to be hard to implement solutions <clears throat> when they are needed uh, when we see them. Now, this is a long uh, slide. We can share some learnings. Uh, this is the first one we have already talked about it. The, uh, we, a lot of people is, is 
focus or even obsessed with uh, co uh, copying the Korean app or the Singapore app or whatever the app developed already in Asia. What we want, we want to send the message is that there are many other things that we can do apart of these apps that obviously only one will succeed, a country or regional level. Um, also, a lot of people, they just get obsessed with, uh, with technology and this is not the point. The point is, what is the problem we want to solve? Because maybe among several people, we can find a better solution than the initial one. So what we suggested we better focus on the challenge and then think of the solution. Don't do a technology push because technology push in healthcare rarely works. Now, when, for example, in this, in this project that I was mentioning about companies and, and, and employees, the first people I called when, after getting the idea was to fo uh, call a lawyer. Okay, because we need to comply with the law. The, regardless if this is an emergency or not, we have to comply with a law and, and, and with normal, uh, with um, regulation. This is still healthcare and this has not changed. Now, it's very important to understand healthcare culture before deploying something because otherwise you will crash against the wall. Okay, communication of what you are doing is key and what we plan to do also is if there is someone that is going to be uh, uh, attacked or they, don't, they feel they have to be in the team, call them as soon as possible so they, they will not stop their deployment afterwards. Now, this is a an, an concrete uh, suggestion that we would like to do to the European Commission and the DG Crow in particular. I know, Antonio, we have someone from them here. If not, please share the presentation with them later. What we propose is to launch a cluster-driven program that does four things. First, as I said, identify what are impactful, tractionable, I call it tractionable, tractionable is not an English word, but I hope that you understand, uh, challenges, okay? We need to understand what are the big problems, but that they can have traction afterwards. Now, I think that we think that cluster are the best actors to co-create cross-sectoral, um, cross fit for purpose solution teams. Now, cluster also can support the execution because they have man, uh, project management skills, they have sectoral know-how, and they have other characteristics that makes them the, the ones that they can help to deploy the solutions. And of course, and the last part, measure impact and share lessons learned and best practices among the community so everybody can learn uh, across Europe and even beyond. This is it. I hope I didn't go very, very fast. I, I was very conscious oh, of the time. Perfect. We do have uh, still six minutes. Okay. So I think that now that the right time is to open the floor, if there are any questions. No, no. Uh, Raul, uh, will, will uh, Raul yeah. intervene or not? Yes. I mean, uh, Raul, please. Well, we, we were discussing uh, with with Jorge all these these ideas since I'm working at the um, uh, Madrid Regional Ministry of Health, and uh, we realized that um, the public administration um, is not only not really ready to to act or uh, or to solve the, the the problem in in this kind of crisis, but also that we need the help of the private sector for for finding and uh, looking for a, a, a solution. If it's better, uh, then we will get ready earlier. And um, it's not only the health uh, impact, what we are worried about it, but also the economic impact and the social impact. And it's clear that um, the, the, the involvement of the citizens, uh, we believe it's, is the key. Um, because then um, we have the technology already but we have to adapt to to the crisis itself. So how to stop this contagious disease, how to provide more safety to the most vulnerable people, like the elderly in this case. I think it's it's something that uh, only can do it um, through technology. And we, we have already. I mean, the people is using this kind of technology for private life, like, um, using to drive the car they know exactly the position through the gps they know how where to go and i think it's if, if the the people get responsibility because i i believe they they got conscious of, of what is going on now i think this this will be the key point for
for using technology uh, in order to give safety and even life in this case, mainly for elderly people. So we were discussing with Jorge how to push this idea and um, he really explained me that DigiGrowth uh, may be something that, uh, that could be uh, interesting in this case because I, I believe Digi, Digi Sante is, is very busy now with the crisis, uh, like uh, it's happening with us now. And uh, I think DigiGrowth can, can play a role. So that's what the, the, the main idea, how to push from the private sector um given some technology that can be used by by the citizens themselves yeah digigrow is very involved and uh, we will transfer for sure the, the suggestion that we made today to them and i am sure that they will hear um this is a question is the in the screen would you any of you is, uh, answer or yes uh thank you veronica Yes, there are some recommendations from the government and what we want to do is to help companies to customize their recommendations to their specific needs and also provide the companies and, employ and employees with a, sol uh, a digital solution <coughs> so they can uh, get access to the information that is customized, I mean the, uh, the, um, the personalized, so to say, information that the company produces also and a way to report the, uh, and a way to report the from the employee to the employer, what is their status and if there are any kind of uh, 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 potential uh, hazard to the other employees. So this is basically complementing what the uh, what the government is doing and helping companies to manage that in a personalized way. Yeah, but I, I will say that um, the, the agreement was very basic, if I am not uh, mistaken. It was very basic, uh, but we want to... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we need we need to develop a lot of new actions just to be effective. For example, we need to be prepared to give all the population masks that we don't have at this moment, as far as I know. Okay, and right. so for example, for example, this is something that we can, could align the production of masks in a massive way, in order to to give that to the population. But we are jumping to the the other uh, section. I will remember you that the the idea of this is just to split uh, the 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 intervention. You have one minute, and later we will speak about uh, uh, needs and solutions. One minute left for you, or we can jump right. to the. Other. If there are no if there are no questions, then what what I will come back uh, to the to the our suggestion, okay, to launch a custom development program for for this. I, I, for the clusters that are in the call, I strongly should encourage you to, that there are a lot of things that we can do between, uh, above from these uh, one-to-end solutions that please interact with your ecosystem, identify those needs, set up uh, cross-sectoral teams like we are doing, for example, together with, uh, with Raul, and, and, and do it. It's feasible, it's possible. We are more into the digital space we think that the time of digital is not today, but it will be in two weeks, even in one week. So for those that are also digital, if you want to share more and you want to collaborate with uh, with what we are doing, please contact me. Uh, the details of my, uh, I guess Antonio will share the presentation after, after this. My details are here. So please contact me for any kind of uh, interaction. That's and I would, like to, I would like to give just an example. Like nowadays in, in, in Madrid, and I think in, in, in every country, we got uh, people that already are cured of the disease and they are still confined at home without doing any activity. We know because the symptoms started like more than four weeks ago without the necessity of doing any test. And, and uh, they are with the same rules that uh, people that can get the disease. So this is an example that we are not dealing uh, well with the problem and the technology can help us. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting. We will come back to you uh, as soon uh, in 10 minutes. Okay. Now we have 10 minutes to uh, speak about the uh, other uh, subject of today. It will be uh, explained by Philippe uh, Sinquin. Sorry for the pronunciation. Ah, Herbert Flood. No, <laughs> Philip, it's your turn. 
Yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Antonio, can I ask you to put up uh, the slides I sent this morning? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I will be presenting, and I thank uh, Hervé Lefloc for the introduction to this uh, consortium, the preliminary results. I insist on the word preliminary because, obviously, we are very actively trying to get uh, more uh, complex and more, uh, more st stable uh, results. Uh, so, we built up a consortium uh, with uh, many uh, teams uh, around France. And if you go to the next slide, Please, Antonio. Yep, please. So uh, I have two, basically two slides. One is on uh, FFP2, the French denomination. Uh, the US one is N95. So these are individual uh, equipments which are dedicated to uh, protecting the one that wears these equipments. Uh, so we have been experimenting uh, several types of treatments individual ones and collective ones. By individual, I mean uh, that uh, each uh, health worker or any guy who using uh, an N95 uh, would be uh, decontaminating himself or herself uh, this uh, device. So uh, in blue appear the ones that were successful. So dry heat 70 degrees. Uh, we uh, have uh, results about uh, decontamination in 18 hours. This was obtained by our colleague uh, Olivier Terrier in Lyon. Uh, five logs, certainly more than five logs. This was the, the limit of the sensitivity of the method. And so I expect today, this morning, by the way, uh, results about one hour uh, effect of uh, dry heat 70 degrees. Good news is that uh, norm EN149, which applies to these uh, equipments, uh, plans that these equipments should re resist 24 hours to 70 degrees. Uh, so we also try 90 degrees because obviously uh, the virus uh, would uh, resist uh, less efficiently. And we are planning tests uh, on uh, 30 minutes. Uh, we also tried uh, 110 uh, degrees, but then uh, it was not uh, uh, possible to use this because uh, we checked the filtration per performance, which had kept uh, very good for the previous uh, temperature. And then we were just above the norm, so we would not recommend this type of uh, heating. About collective uh, methods, I will speak only about the ethylene oxide, which is known to be very efficient as a decontamination agent. So no need to check about uh, its effect on SARS-CoV-2, because it's sure that it will kill it. And the good news is that uh, it was successful. Now, we have to uh, try on more uh, FFP2s and also to have more cycles. What I say here corresponds to only one cycle, but it's already interesting to be able to uh, reuse this. And by the way, uh, uh, an American task force has uh, similar results about this. Uh, I don't speak about the other methods which failed and which we will find in the next slide. And we move to the next slide. Sorry. No. Yeah, so this is about surgical mass, and then you see that basically everything works, uh, either uh, collective methods and uh, individual methods. Uh, so uh, washing, uh, we were able to prove that uh, we lost we lost uh, only two to four percent of performance. Uh, now you have to consider that uh, the uh, EN one one four six A three plants uh, ninety eight percent of uh, uh, filtration. Uh, but uh, we are massively importing the Chinese uh, masks, uh, which are 95%. Uh, and what we experience is that even new masks uh, that we uh, experience, which should comply with the European norm, in fact, were uh, not uh, at 98%. So we consider that losing 2 to 4% remains very interesting, because as you know, these masks are not intended to protect the user they are intending to protect the other ones. So we should, all of us, be wearing such masks, not to protect ourselves, but to protect our fellow uh, citizens. So um, uh, washing is fine. Uh, autoclave, uh, meaning uh, um, uh, saturating the water at uh, 121 uh, degrees during 20 minutes. This is very good because there is no loss uh, in the filtration uh, performance, not that that was uh, measurable. And we also used uh, irradiation uh, uh, with gamma or beta. So good news about this uh, is that uh, only in France, but I guess it's the same everywhere in Europe, uh, we have facilities, industrial facilities, 
and it would be possible to uh, process this way uh, up to more than one million uh, masks uh, each day uh, with this method. So the question here is about collecting, uh, but there are solutions to, to that. It's a question of logistics on which uh, we are actively uh, working. Uh, another uh, method uh, on which we are very uh, optimistic, because as you saw, we had very good results on FFP2, which are much more demanding than surgical masks. And this is ethylene uh, oxide. Uh, and uh, again, uh, this is a method which uh, would allow more than 1 million uh, masks in France with only one company. We have been working with Ionizos, but there are other companies. So the, the, the bottleneck will not be uh, about this. Uh, in terms of individual, uh, we have only been taken. Uh, oh, uh, did I make a mistake here? Um, yeah. Uh, can you come back to preview slide, please, uh, Antonio? Yeah. I'm just yeah. wondering if I didn't make a mistake in the uh, copy paste. I... Yes, so collect uh, it is side, that's right. And then I come back again. Uh, next slide, please. The, the okay, uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, yes, that's fine. Uh, I was just confused. Uh, I've, class I've classified washing as collective uh, because in hospitals, for instance, uh, uh, it's uh, one place which uh, processes all the clothes from the uh, from the hospital, but obviously you could also use it at home. So in in some sense, it's uh, uh, also uh, individual. And so we have been trying dry heat, uh, 90 degrees, and we obtain no loss. Uh, and so uh, we, we we plan to uh, show that it's uh, active in terms of decontamination. So the comment on that is that uh, for surgical mass, I guess we have quite a lot of solutions. By the way. I've learned yesterday that the German government has authorized uh, washing uh, 60 degrees uh, for decontamination. So I think that uh, I, I do not yet know which are the proofs on which they uh, have this, but uh, certainly they have. Uh, so I think that uh, for surgical masks, there is really some solutions uh, that uh, can be uh, that can be applied. Uh, the most sensitive, uh, perhaps, are the FFP2s. So for the FFP2s. Uh, you should not wash because if you put water, you lose the electrostatic effect, which is the reason of the efficiency of these uh, filters. Uh, but then there are uh, as well individual, as I said, and uh, collective with uh, ethylene oxide. And also uh, the US have demonstrated the interest of HT, H, uh, peroxide of uh, oxygen in vapor. Uh, and we are investigating, by the way, many other uh, solutions, but we do not yet have results. Uh, by using CO2 uh, in the supercritical states. We are also using uh, hydrogen, uh, ozone plasma, uh, and uh, sorry, ozone and uh, oxygen plasma. Uh, oh, and yeah, I forgot also uh, UVC, uh, which uh, are uh, very exciting and which uh, will probably also be uh, very good uh, uh, to use on FFP2s and on surgical masks, and which are individual solutions. Well, that's it. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Herbert. Do you want to say anything? You have one minute and a um, half. I, I have very frankly, I have nothing special to add to the uh, Philippe uh, uh, Sankam presentation. He is the expert. I was just um, <clears throat> introducing this alternative to possibly answer the uh, uh, face mask crisis we are all uh, um, uh, going through. So um, based on these results, very frankly, I think that we should certainly not keep concentrating on producing more and more face masks. Uh, based on these preliminary results that are very promising, looking at the uh, filtration performance, uh, looking at the uh, um, COVID-19 decontamination level, it's very encouraging. So I would definitely uh, propose to amplify the efforts. And thanks, uh, Professor Sanke, again, because I know you're a hospital practitioner as well, so you're very busy these days. And uh, we should maybe, uh, Antonio, um, think about talking with the Commission to uh, mount a collaborative uh, project uh, in a short, on a short-term basis, of course, uh, if we want that to make sense. 
but this is definitely um, a good approach. Uh, we have to think about the the confinement phase that will come and uh, one of the recommendation is that uh, everybody going outside should wear a face mask so um, I think this should allow uh, people at the house if the washing approach is efficient to um, you know take care of that so if Professor Sank was interested of course uh, uh, I would like to keep talking with him to consider um, uh, uh, submitting uh, 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 R&D project or collaborative Perfect. project, let's say. I'm done. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you also, Professor uh, uh, Philippe. Um, and please uh, let us know if we could share this documentation, this, this PowerPoint, or if you prefer to send us something else and we will share it and we can continue discussing about those that uh, possible projects okay uh, now it's time sorry, to uh, go I, I find... sorry sorry i just say to the sound is very bad of course we will go into this direction and about the powerpoint we have to, so I, I would just I, I would just add uh, a final slide about uh, uh, the sound is very bad. If you don't want, if you don't mind, we we will continue and you can later uh, send us some some kind of message or or, or make the, the the suggestion by by a slide. Okay. So next block. Antonio. About Antonio. Antonio, what I propose is to be in touch with uh, Professor Cinquin to, Perfect. you know, fix everything up together. Perfect. Perfect. We will do that. Thank you. Uh, so now we will speak about needs, not comments, no suggestions. Now it's about needs. You need to define needs, please. I will give you, not everybody can speak. Yes, we, we have something like 20 minutes, so seven persons. Please, I, will, I have not a list of participants. I will give you the opportunity, but please, please be very direct to the need. Okay, who is the first? Nobody? If I can <clears throat> tell something. Yeah. I'm, I'm Raul from, from Madrid Health Service. I think the need will be who who's the, the person or the patient that will be more in danger in case they will get the virus. Good morning. Maybe we need... We need to focus the need in in one sector. I mean, for example, can be social need, can be technological needs, can be uh, management needs. Uh, maybe because in from my my point of view, sorry, I'm the lost from the cluster map. I can talk about technological needs. This this is what I know more. But maybe there are a lot of needs uh, from different perspective. Okay, more. I want to define a need, and I, I, for me, it's clear that we need masks, at least in Spain, and we need to we we need to have some kind of homologation or rules from the Spanish government in order to enable enable the companies to um, make that mask. So for me, it's a clear need. We need the uh, regulation of masks and to organize our production uh, means to, to uh, deliver them to the population and the professionals as soon as possible. So the, the proposal from our side is to emulate the French government uh, examples, uh, creating three levels of different mass, one for the healthy professional 
at the same that uh, they are using now. So the, the new levels are one for uh, people uh, uh, working with uh, uh, other people, okay, for example, in the markets, and one for the general population. So then related to that, Antonio, for sure we need alternative materials to produce these masks. Uh, also, we need how to uh, the, the the fabrication process, how we can produce that massively, uh, and then how to distribute and make a good uh, communication uh, to inform uh, how to use this mask uh, for the population. Because maybe there are masks that you can protect you, but the other mask is that you don't contaminate, and 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 this is also related to your needs, I think. Thank you. And finally, just one comment. In France, uh, yesterday I read uh, uh, an article that they have developed a platform, uh, international platform, to try to get um, provisions from international. So they make an, uh, uh, an application in order to see on time and online how, for example, how many masks are available available in China, in Taiwan, or in Singapore, and then just make uh, the, the purchase. They aggregate all this information in only one platform. I can share it because it, I think it's really interesting. They they improve a lot in order to get the the, the components. Perfect. Share, share that reference, please. Anyone else? I I have a need also. Uh, I I think that on top of the of the um, uh, recycling or, or on top of the heat treatment and all the treatments to to reuse. We should know also technically do do experiments to know uh, how much time can we uh, use these masks because 3M 40 they they say 40 hours of continuous use um, and of course with time uh, the, the the fibers are gonna get moisture and and, and this is gonna basically affect uh, the electrostatic uh, charge and so and uh, on. We should parallel to the to the to the um, disinfection uh, treatment uh, discuss about how many how much time can we use or how many cycles can we do on a on a on a mask to be useful and not to to be a, a threat. Perfect. Antonio. One else. Uh, oh. One need. Uh, we need to identify who can go back to work and establish a clear procedure or way to allow people to go back to work safely without being a threat for themselves and without being a threat for other people if they cannot contaminate. So identify who is uh, already on the other side of the virus and if they can go back to work safely, a way to identify them and a way to restore that they can go back safely to work. I think it's very important because every day we are losing GDP and uh, we need those resources also to fight clinically and medically against uh, the, the pandemic. Perfect. Another need? For me, another need will be to get an harmonized data. Um, it's clear that now we are using data that is not um, very reliable and the criteria followed by different countries is completely different. So we are getting conclusions based on data that um, are not the right conclusions because the data is not uh, exactly the same. Perfect. More needs. Um, I see so many uh, information on uh, social networks. Uh, some are good, some are only funny, but people that are at home isolated, they believe in what they see. So I think there is the need to be clear about truth and fake uh, information, not only about data in general, but also about solutions. For instance, I see many, many suggestions of how in, at home we can make masks. Um, and some are good, some maybe are not. We don't know. Uh, general people do not know materials, so they, know, don't know, they do not know how much they are protecting themselves and others. 
perfect. More needs. I think that we need also to have a better, a better uh, tools to uh, identify the um, the population with the illness, with the virus, um, to be able to control that in a continuous way. Um, especially speaking of the uh, period that we will pass through in two, two three months. So we need to uh, reach for. Um, some kind of uh, very widely uh, available testing that could help us to quickly identify who is infected and quickly take action on that. Yeah, Morning. Antonio, in, the, in, in, that, in that regard, I think one of the most important matters is to identify the people without symptoms. So I believe with, with the getting more knowledge, it uh, may be possible to, to identify small symptoms that are um, giving us some information uh, of the people that is thinking that they, they don't know exactly what is the disease in order to avoid the, the contagious between each other. And related to that, it's true that then it's more complicated even because you need more tests and uh, with a high, high, high sensibility. So. From the technological point of view, this is more complex. On, on, in, on, on this specific um, uh, topic you mentioned, as far as I know, uh, they are now working on the... I'm not expert, so I, I, I'm not sure to have the right words, but uh, uh, they are trying to have um, a test or they're trying to deploy a test, um, which is not directly uh, looking at the virus, but uh, it's in serology. So you have the traces uh, in your blood of the presence of the of, of the of the virus. So this should be a very relevant solution, especially for mass testing of the population. And, you have and yeah, to, two solutions. We are yes. in need. So, you so I know this. The, you should keep to the needs. We yes, have, but we have a block for solutions. But this is a need. This is a need because okay. uh, there is a big demand, and that type of test is not fully uh, um, um, operating, let's say, right now. So that's a need. Okay. Okay. I will. I, I will say another need. I, we need some kind of emergency rules to jump the homolog uh, homologation processes or to at, uh, make them very, very quick. And we don't have this kind of uh, proce uh, procedures implemented. And I am thinking about the models that are developing the community, the makers, and, and, and so on. There is a proposal okay, on that we will speak about later. Another need. Uh, maybe another need is a good social communication to inform properly uh, on time and technical point of view of the population. As uh, somebody say, there is a lot of information around, uh, some that are good, some that are not good. Uh, I think that a good campaign of communication is mandatory. Antonio, seen from the cluster window as a need, in this um, very tough um, uh, period of time um, for the different topics that were exposed this morning and, 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 and the day uh, before, I think we should have a better visibility on the tools available at the commission level to support on a financial basis some projects that we need. It's not only a question of money, but we need to be more reactive I know the commission is a big machine. It takes time to, to, to have the machine running <laughs> on a cruise, you know, uh, basis. So, so, so the need is really to have inputs uh, from the commission, proposal from the commission, tools from the commission to facilitate, accelerate the funding of some works to be done 
okay, to be confirmed, especially like this morning, this uh, decontamination and then reusability of masks is very important. How could we support quickly some initiatives in France, in, in Spain, in Italy? How could we do that? Perfect. Perfect. I, 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 I really need that. Perfect. Thank you, Herbert. So, this is about needs. So we, we, we will jump to the solutions, if you don't mind, okay? Uh, so, now, solutions uh, for those needs or for other needs? National what textiles. Sorry? Could you repeat, sorry? National textiles. Could you explain better? Sure. Sure. Uh, I mean, the, the the textiles in every country needs to be need to be tested, and we need more laboratories and so. But this is not about needs. So basically, uh, that what we rely on the textiles that already are devel uh, being developing or, or being developed or being in developing um, condition in, in in every country in the European Union. You, you mean uh, those that are intended initially for other uh, other uh, functionalities as sports, for example, that kind of textiles? For example, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, all the all the industry that already uh, they they know and they can do even layers and so and they can achieve. They are achieving in Spain at least uh, FFP2 and FFP3. So the, the the resources are there. It's only that we need to give them time and, and, of course, resources to, to test them. Again, the problem is the homologation of those textiles. Okay. Oh, yeah, the Next problem one. is the homologation and also the, the, the make uh, an accumulation of the data. In this sense, I agree with Miguel Angel. And as you know, Miguel Angel, in Spain, we are working on that. We have already identified some textiles, but it's true that we need to put in an of official uh, platform or an official channel that is uh, reliable for everybody and just then can be uh, extended for everybody because it's not the data is closed and keep it in a small paradigm and then it's really difficult to to expand we could help one solution that i i can offer to you is use our uh, resources cluster resources. We could have uh, making a central database with this data and providing it to the government. Okay, that's a so proposal for solution. Uh, hello, <coughs> Lubos Komarek from Czech Republic is speaking. Can you hear me? Yeah, go yeah, on. Okay, uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, I, I had the invitation yesterday from Eva Revilla to this Skype. Uh, we started uh, one one week ago. We started to produce uh, nanofiber uh, filters for breathing that are uh, that are fully antibacterial as well because we put inside betadina, which is killing bacteria, and we started to produce the filters for our members and we started to to sell them as well. Uh, we have equipment for this and uh, some solution can be also that uh, maybe the commission could. Uh, uh, finance the equipment and we could technology transfer to you and give you the recipe and you could produce it locally this is what we do uh, of course like so we are basically going against ourselves because we will lose the the salt of the mask but we don't care so yeah we have a final product now it's tested uh, it was tested for 100 nanometer capturing and it achieved 99.99 something percent of uh, capturing. So this is, I think, it's F FTP3. And we will give, have a more test during this week. We are sending also some samples around. So yeah, technology transfer could be the solution for, for this. And uh, the production of nanofiber by itself is very cheap because it doesn't need that much energy. And the polymer solution, you know, you have two grams per square meter. So the material by itself costs, I don't know, one hour for I don't know how many masks. So this can be can be a way to go. But uh, we need to quickly mobilize this. If, if, uh, yeah. And ask the commission to, to technology transfer. That's um, very, sorry. Good, very good. Go on, go on. Uh, Antonio, uh, sorry, only to propose something, because it's true that in this era we need to share the information, and this is against the company. Um, but uh, I think that there are already tools there, like for example, there are the, the, the Creative Commons um, 
uh, buy and share alike. Um, and you, you can basically make sure that every person that is going to use it is going to cite you. And in the end, of course, uh, it's not like you are going to get the money, but uh, at least you are going to get the recognition. And in the post era, in the in the in the post virus era, that's going to be recognized. So I, I think that you can use this kind of tool of uh, sharing, but with the condition that you are cited and you are uh, you are the yeah the founder of, of the of, of this solution. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, Lou was very important your uh, your contribution, and we need to fix uh, how to use it, how to do it as soon as possible, how to transfer that technology. So we will keep in contact after this uh, by the if you want, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, also there is uh, uh, like you you were talking about how to monitorize the people they are wearing masks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, now uh, there will be a new software, uh, international launch here in Czech Republic, uh, which is basically doing this in the anonym manner. So, you know, nobody is sharing your... The idea is that uh, the mask will be monitorized. And then if you get the coronavirus or somebody gets the coronavirus, it will track backwards and see uh, which people you were in contact with, etc., etc. So I will I will have more information about this software maybe by next week, so then I can provide you more details. But uh, uh, one of our, our partner is launching this on the national level, and it will be approved by ministry. So this is very very interesting how to anonymously you know follow the the masks and see, or well, you know if somebody is ill, then it automatically informs the rest. Hey, be careful because you were in the area where somebody was ill. So please check uh, if you have these and these symptoms and yeah, just make the hygiene and and try to, you know, decontaminate everything you have. So yeah, I will have more info about this next week. That's very, very, very uh, interesting. Don't wait. As soon as you uh, have the possibility to put us in contact with uh, the team that is developing that, please mm -hmm. do that. Don't wait. No, okay. Don't wait any hour. Don't wait uh, the weekend, don't wait anything. Please. Okay, I can I can call him and uh, pass you through. Okay. Yeah, please. Thank you. More solutions. Antonio, Antonio this is Jorge uh, again. If you check the chat of the of the group, I, I just put there uh, a link to a digital health uh, repository where we are collecting solutions for for against the coronavirus. If you click on the on the link, Antonio, uh, this platform. Yeah. Uh, so. No, no, no. Uh, on this, on on the uh, on the link above, on the well, uh, this is basically a repository of digital health solutions against coronavirus, and you can. It's free and it's open. We have already more than one hundred and and and, um, and twenty. Uh, you can use it for your companies to register, or you can share that with your local authorities, health authorities, in case they are looking for something. Uh, that can help them. There are from uh, online uh, triage solutions to telemedicine solutions to uh, solutions for tackling different diseases. Because one need I forgot to mention is uh, I don't know if you talk with your uh, with doctors, they tell you that uh, there are a lot of people that uh, they regularly go and that now they don't go to the hospitals. I know that this is a need, but uh, these people are staying at home, but they are still ill. But they don't go to the hospital because they are them. So maybe telemedicine can be a solution for this kind of people. And there we collect uh, uh, solutions from different European countries. You can also, if you go to the overall database, we have more than 1,000 references, including investors, including experts in regulatory, uh, legal, etc. This is open. This is free. It's all for you. You don't even need to reference us. Okay. But um, uh, uh, and you can. The link is in the chat. That's Please uh, share the links in the in the Slido yeah. because in the Slido I will do. So. I yeah, will do so. yeah. Please and also reference that tool here in the ECCP forum. It is Please. already there. It is already there. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. More solutions. Hello. Hello. Uh, the solution uh, to reinforce the European industrial value chains, not only emergent ones but also the traditional ones. Okay. Was I clear?
Yeah, in, in this in this regard, uh, maybe maybe out of scope, but um, I think in in Europe we we have a clear uh, agriculture and, and fishing policy, but um, I don't find like a common industrial uh, policy. Yeah. Yeah. Another solution that I would propose is. Uh, I, uh, some of you could remember Joke's proposal some days ago about uh, making a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, system uh, for reviewing new new um, prototypes and uh, new design for 3D printing and enable, enabling the possibility to make a very a strong and solid recommendation to the homologation authorities. Okay, that's a solution. And related with that, I will propose for the Commission to uh, enable quick tools to help us to develop these kind of projects. Because uh, at this moment, the, 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 there are a lot of ideas, but no money for them, uh, just money for companies or just money for, but uh, we need to be able to develop that, that this kind of solutions. And they could take in account these, uh, these proposals and, and the, the need to support the, these uh, actions with with uh, funds. Okay, more questions. Antonio, one one solution would be to create a fast track project to with the goal of having a system to get people back to work. This was a need, and the solution is the the fast track from the European Commission to approve uh, a program to fund uh, a pan European solution to to do this and this uh, solution together with what you have just mentioned one minute ago in reality is the hackathon that we were mentioning a couple of weeks ago that would come up with the challenges that would be projects that would be impactful the real life is now putting those projects on the table and Ula is not here today but uh, this would be an answer to her uh, uh, plea to identify meaningful and impactful projects from sectors who would be seriously involved in this. And if she wants to put money to do this, it would be like a, like a, a little uh, go to the moon project. This, was, this is uh, something that the EU is uh, fundamental in, in delivering. Perfect. Thank you. More um, solutions? It, it is clear that the homologation entities are underwater line. Uh, I think in every country. Um, so a solution, I come back to a solution I, I've suggested another day, which is the commission to allow that uh, something that is already worked on in one of the EU countries and is approved by the legal authorities of that country could be used in the other 26 because uh, there is no time to wait for each country to, to do the same tests and the same uh, bureaucratic papers to allow us all to use the solutions. I totally agree with that, yeah. Some kind of European homologation, quick, fast uh, European homologation. Okay, more solutions. And, and divided efforts. Who else wants to? If there are not more solutions, as we are uh, just uh, getting close to the to the end of the sessions, uh, Ilaria is taking notes, I suppose. Uh, Ilaria, uh, we should speak about also about decisions, actions that we could take from this uh, session, okay? What can we do what, uh, what, with what we have learned? So, um, Ilaria, would you propose uh, some, some actions? Well, I think that during the speakings, we uh, there was a lot of moment uh, in which you, for example, Antonio was uh, talking about yes, do this, do that, uh, keep on track, keep keep us uh, updated. 
um, those are very little action, but uh, very important in order to go on. So uh, we don't. I, I I don't see a very specific action or decisions we are taking everyone, but uh, uh, very little action, very important at the same time. Okay, we will write a, a list of uh, the needs and the solutions and we will share them to everybody mm -hmm. as soon as possible, okay? And I will propose to try to identify possible action for every uh, suggestion between us, okay? Uh, uh, we can share them in the, in the, uh, by email, or, but I have, I have created also just yesterday uh it's like a um, space i will share it with with you with whoever is interested okay and uh, my proposal is to try to um, advance on every suggestion that we think it's meaningful okay i don't know if through the slack space or through the eccp forum uh, probably eccp forum is best for communication because everything that is written there it's also read by the commission and they follow and they, they can interact probably it's better okay but uh, i would try to not just speak but act based on what we are saying here okay anyway it's not easy to keep everything on track uh, i'm thinking about making a sort of a conceptual map in order to have uh, a a, a single dashboard with all the elements involved in this in this moment because uh, the situation is very complicated. That would be wonderful. Antonio, if yeah. I may, I think the, the idea of the Slack is good maybe also because Slack can, can be also a dynamic knowledge repository. So I will combine both uh, a Slack for dynamic exchanges and then the repository for more stable uh, knowledge. Perfect. But as you want. No, no, no. We we, we need to put this in action, and and, and there is uh, we, we need to choose the tools and use them because we don't have time to to lose. Okay. So it's uh, perfect. Okay. Um, tomorrow we will speak about uh, a, a very important point: is, uh, structural funds. We will have Marek uh, here with us. Uh, he's from DG Radio. He will explain. Uh, how the new funds would be delivered. The, the, he commented to me last week that uh, the, the the rule of uh, um, um, the rule is totally different with the spending of the the new money. It's possible just to have 100% of the money from the European Commission. You don't need to put money from the regions. But the, the point there is how to best use this money, not to lose it in in some not so useful uh, projects. I think that we have a responsibility, a responsibility to uh, uh, define good proposals, okay? Uh, based on the real needs and transfer those that proposals to our um, policy makers or whoever is responsible of uh, spending that money in, in uh, at least to have them uh, choose between the best option possible, okay? So uh, I, I will invite you to be here uh, tomorrow. Uh, also to invite them, if you uh, can please forward this uh, invitation to your uh, authorities, regional authorities especially, those that will, uh, will um, have the possibility to decide on how to spend that money because it's important for them to hear Marek, but also to understand that we could help them to make the, the best investment possible of that money. That's at least what I think. Okay, so please forward the invitation to them and try to get them here. Is that clear? Okay, thank you very much. And with that, uh, I, I, I really, really want to thank you everyone that has been here, especially, um, especially Raul. Uh, I know that he's in a very, very hard days. 
and it's important to have him here uh, dedicating his knowledge and wisdom with, to, to share it with us, okay? Thank you, see you tomorrow. At Bye. Bye-bye. See have a you great tomorrow, day, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. Bye, thank you.